Welcome to part two of Clifford Cerise's story. In this segment, Clifford talks about prohibition and growing up doing chores on the farm. So during prohibition, did your family make a little of the, the dad, dad made it. Well, stuff? everybody, everybody made it, but uh, uh, the dad used to sell a little bit of it in Glenwood because my grandmother at that time was uh, running a hotel in Glenwood, and she had workers there that you know they wanted a little bottle on weekends uh-huh. or something. But everybody made it. You know, Dad said, hell, you went to a dance in those days, you could always tell who was drinking their own stuff because he said they had a ring across the top of their nose from drinking out of a fruit jar. <laughs> you know, they said the, the ring at the top yeah. of the jar. It would leave a them, mark on the right on bridge the of their nose. nose. Yeah, and, uh, and I know he talked about how they used to buy it from different guys that made it, you know, and uh, it... Uh, you know, it wasn't no big business like Al Capone or any of those. No, you know? but it was. They was uh, it was handled, and they uh, they had it. They had it on Saturday nights when they went to a dance. You know, like I told you one time before, my dad believed in making the kids work, and we worked. You know, we always we. Uh, we lived in the, the brick house that's right over here, and right here where we're sitting now, there used to be a wood pile. When I come home from school, chopped enough wood, and I had a, you know, kids always had a wagon that they, you know, and this one had sideboards on. I'd fill it up with wood, and I hauled up the house to fill the wood box every night, you know. I'd give my sister the, a book to take, books to take in, and and I'd do that. And then in the winter, you had to haul and fill the coal buckets up, you know, because you'd burn it, burning coal. But, you know, it worked and, well, I just always liked working outside. That's the end of part two of Clifford Cerise's story.